Hi, Gemini. How are you? It's me, LB. Welcome to the Untitled Tarot. As always, Gemini, your readings are timeless. Um, and all 12 of the Zodiac sign readings, they're all for you. So go by the titles, go by the timestamps, go wherever you're guided to. That's the best way to watch any reading in general. I'm going to use the Dream Keepers Tarot for you today. I just got it in the collection by Palmer, who got it for me off my Amazon wish list. So thank you so much, Palmer. I am loving it. You have, like, you have a strange energy, Gemini. I mean, maybe you're really bummed out because your birthday season is done. Um, now that we've moved into cancer season, I don't think that Gemini's and cancers really, like, vibe together like that. Um, you feel, when I went to sit down in your energy, I got, like, a headache. And it's, like, this blank sort of feeling, which is strange. And it doesn't feel like blank page clean slate like anything could happen it's not that kind of energy it's like a void it's like a black hole kind of energy now they're playing me that song what is it by muse supersonic black hole it's like this just like void that you're feeling right now and to be truthful with you gemini the whole collective is going through like these shadow purgings and like these internal tower moments um it doesn't, and there's something about it that feels off because it's like, it's the summer solstice. Like you should be feeling like the solstice with the mostest right now. Everyone should be, but everyone is going through this like weird shadow purge. Um, and it feels like untimely. Like we shouldn't, we, everyone should be happy. Like it's summer, like it's summer solstice, like, but everyone's just like a little aggressive and like bummed out right now. And I think you're really taking a lot of that on. Um, and just feeling kind of like a void and on the shuffle man seat, you have this song um by rue Payne's called color in your heart color in your heart color in your heart and so there's this idea of like needing to approach the void with color um almost like a like a coloring book right and and it's just black and white you know it's just like it's just like emptiness and then just like space and and needing to get like a little creative even maybe about how you want to color it in maybe even doing something that's like a little bit untraditionally like painting a duck blue um something like that does that make sense i feel like that's from a movie painting a duck blue i don't remember what movie though um is that adam sandler is it big daddy maybe maybe a blue duck that's interesting because ducks talk a lot about, okay, so follow my train of thought, Gemini. Ducks talk a lot about like family and love and loyalty and stuff like that. And then it's like blue, like it's a blue duck, right? Ducks are normally like white or they're kind of like yellow, which kind of talks about that solar plex. Like you get a lot of life and like energy and vitality and excitement from like your friends and your families and like your lovers, right? But it's like blue. It's a little bit blue and we'll, we'll go into it. But you did have the nine and the ten of cups fly out and they wanted to stay out in reverse so then we might just be feeling like a little blue about like your family or your love situation maybe something something like worked out for you or well it was just father's day yeah it was just father's day yesterday too and sometimes that makes people kind of blue right which i understand my father passed away a few years ago so i under i understand if that's like a thing right not feeling close to your family as you would want to or you know maybe those aspects um those parental figures aren't there for you or you don't have the emotional support but needing to find like a colorful way even untraditional from what you originally thought you wanted or what you grew up with um to kind of like make a new family like make new friends uh date new kind of people it's it's that kind of energy so let's pray and then we'll 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 dig into these i had another card fly out we'll dig into these cards a little bit deeper and we'll keep going okay all right Father God, thank you for bringing me and my Gemini's in today. I ask that you give me wisdom, clarity, and discernment to deliver these messages accurately for Gemini's highest of love, light, alignment, and assignment. We praise you. We love you. We thank you always. We give you all the glory and the honor for these messages. To the utmost high, in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen, Gemini. So, nine and ten of cups. In reverse, the Nine of Cups talks about your personal wish fulfillment. And if you look at this card, each of the little cups has these little butterflies on it, right? And they're yellow, you know, a little bit like that. And now they're saying like duck, duck, goose, as I'm kind of looking at this Ten of Cups, like almost wondering like when it's going to be your turn, when it's going to be your turn. It's almost like that movie, uh, 27 Dresses, like always a bridesmaid, Gemini, always a bridesmaid. And in this Ten of Cups, there's like this light and airy feeling 
there's this impression that what is it called it's like that very traditional white picket fence 2.5 kids uh like rockefeller christmas it's like that kind of um like family setup with like your old pals and you go meet up at the bar and you know what I mean and it, it's like it's like uh, it's almost like cheers it's like wanting to have almost like this movie family or like this movie relationship or like that it's like very nostalgic it's like very six of cups kind of feeling to it and 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 maybe you had pieces of it and they didn't work out and with these butterflies on this cups it's the idea that like it's very obvious that you know, there's nothing wrong with 2.5 kids and a white picket fence. I would love a white picket fence. I think that sounds just peachy to me. You know what I mean? But there's something about having to be adaptable or um, transformative in, in what you want or, or the way you're going to go about it or even looking outside your type or realizing that, you know, like uh, a real family is people that come together as a support system that it's not always blood right sometimes your friends are you know you don't get to pick your family you know sometimes your friends can be your family or blended families right like something something like that like for some of you and just because it's coming through so i'm just gonna speak it um like for some of you like you in the past never considered like dating someone that like was divorced or had kids or like something like that and being really forced to kind of challenge that notion of how you think a relationship is supposed to start or the way like um, a healthy family unit is supposed to be. It's the idea of, of just needing to evolve it a little bit because what you really want and what you are looking for and what would actually be good for you just may be like a little bit outside of what you had previously perceived. And if you do want to attain this wish fulfillment, um, needing to be a little bit more open-minded and, and open-hearted right and there maybe that's something about the color right like your true family unit may actually be like a little bit more colorful than what you grew up in or what you were expecting right not so um wonder bread black and white again like cut and dry you know like maybe the person that you're with or the person that is going to be the best for you is going to be a little quirky or like be a little strange right and and that might not be the kind of person that like you thought would work well with you but it actually does maybe they are from a different race or they're from a different religion or a different culture or something like that and you never really like thought about it like that right you know what I mean you're like we're gonna go to church and they're like I'm gonna burn fucking Palo Santo in the backyard and howl at the moon and you're like how does that work because sometimes it does sometimes opposites attract right so there there is a need to be more adaptable in that you do have the the world card coming up next which talks a lot about um completion and it's the idea of needing to make peace with the fact that some times cycles complete themselves while it still feels like there's unfinished business there's this unfinished business energy but the business actually is finished which tells me that some of these cycles have ended without you having full explanations or without you receiving closure or without a lot of these <clears throat> situations still making any sense to you. And sometimes people don't change. Sometimes we have to make our own closure. Um, and that seems to be perhaps something that's difficult for you right now. The business is finished, but it still feels unfinished because it, it, it didn't feel wrapped up. It didn't feel concluded, even though it's done. It's also the energy of like not ending on a high note, that sort of thing. And, and they're bringing it up, like the whole idea of like <clears throat> blood is thicker than water. So you may have actually in the past stayed around people, kept family members in your life, even stayed in relationships or with friends that like you've had for a long time because just like blood is thicker than water. But that's actually not the saying. The saying is that the blood of the covenant is thicker than the water of the womb, which means that a covenant, a commitment, who you choose, who you pull together in a group dynamic, whether it's romantic, social, familial, that is stronger than the water of the womb, than the ancestral com community longevity aspect, the nostalgia of the people that you have around you, right? And there's been this big energy this whole week in the collective about like the land of misfit toys, 
um, and how that's actually like a really cool thing to have a lot of different quirky colorful people who normally wouldn't look like they go together but they actually do and you know they're bringing me back to they're bringing me back to big daddy at the i hope i'm not going to spoil big daddy for that movie <laughs> like 20 years um when adam sandler's on trial and they, and they have the guy in the stand they goes yeah they go together like a uh, uh, lamb and and tuna fish or like uh you know it's like that kind of thing like peanut butter and tuna fish and they're like Ugh. and he's like spaghetti and meatball is that better and again they're bringing me back to this daddy thing so i'm wondering if like their um mindsets narratives put into your spirit as like a kid or growing up Gemini about the kind of person you were supposed to be with or the kind of things that you were supposed to do the kind of job that you were supposed to have like you know what I mean putting things on that and a lot of it feels religious and a lot of it feels racial even and cultural and like that kind of thing right and so I'm wondering about that there could even have been people friends um potential lovers stuff like that and like your family was unapproving of them or their family perhaps was like unapproving of you like there there is that energy in there and again it's like this big daddy big daddy like and now they're also bringing in this like strange like a big brother kind of aspect so it could like be literally a big brother um this could be something your brother is dealing with when you're on the outskirts um or like a, a government thing, which is weird. Like for, this is so strange. I didn't think we were gonna go here. Um, maybe even for some of you, you have like grown close to someone who lives in like another country. And with COVID restrictions, they're not able to get a visa to come over or like a green card or like that, that kind of thing. Cause it's like this big brother thing. It's like the government, it's like, there's too much red tape. It's like, so for some of you, it's like having to do with these really long distance relationships too. And feeling like at a loss a little bit, like the, the, the restrictions, the shutdowns, like they can't get a visa, like they can't get a thing. You know what I mean? It's like, there is something, there's something strange in the water. Mm. seven of cups in reverse talks about clearing out a lot of temptation and a lot of confusion i notice in her in this card see how her head is all fragmented like that it's almost like when you burn out from overthinking <laughs> you're so confused and you're trying to figure it out and you're like wait is this is this a paradigm that was put in my head by my parents is wait like is my wish fulfillment not my wish fulfillment how do i evolve it like i gotta step outside my type maybe i gotta go somewhere else like i gotta right and it's like eventually it's almost just like putting it all down because you just burn out and i think that's that blank kind of void feeling um but it it feels like a little nefarious like it nefarious um it feels like a little bit depressive it again it doesn't feel blank page and clean slate and anything could happen and like let's start over fresh like it feels like a like a black hole void which doesn't feel great. And again, it's like the headache. It's like, oh, I'll just be alone. Like, oh, just forget it. Like, oh, just whatever. Like, it's not, it's not with the headache anymore. Like, it's, it's that kind of thing. Is that the, yep, it's the lovers. Color in your heart. We got a color in your heart. Something about these heads projected outside the body. Something feels like a phones or like FaceTime. FaceTime? It could be a play on words like you're not getting enough face time like with somebody that you want and feeling like a little bit hopeless about it right like you're not getting good spend enough quality time or you want to get to know someone and you're not getting enough one-on-one -on -one time with them to like get to know them or build up intimacy or connection or, or something like that or the only time you get to talk to them because maybe they're at a distance is over facetime like there there is something about that it's like lovers at a distance lovers at a distance um and for those of you that are like single as a Pringle, it's almost the idea of like sticking your neck out, like looking around to see if your person's like on the horizon, like on the horizon, even like going out of your way to join like dating sites or like you, 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 maybe you're more of a homebody, but it's like, you're going out to the bars. It's like just trying to make yourself like present and available in case that person just happens to, but again, it feels like it's so much work. And that's part of the burdensome, like burnt out overthinking, like, it's the idea of like, it should be easier than this. It should be easier than this. Color in your heart, color in your heart. And there's something about the way that they're dressed too, Gemini. You see how they're all dressed up like for a ball or like for a masquerade. It's the idea of everything being so formal and like, I don't want to ask people what the favorite color is anymore. And like, 
Wait, wait, where's your favorite place to eat? It's like everyone likes tacos. Everyone likes tacos in Game of Thrones. It's like it's like wanting to have like authentic connections and like and like deep conversations and like a real like stirring in the spirit and like there there is this idea. Does that does that make sense? Does that make sense to you? There's also a thing about being mindful of what arc archetypes you attract or you're drawn to because i'm just looking like in her dress and there are these little statues and they almost have like these little like lunar phases on top of them but there's something about them that they feel very like greek goddess statue and like being mindful of like what archetypes you are attracted to and whether that's what is actually good for you or what that's actually if that actually works for you in relationship or if that's just what was like imprinted on you by the kind of people that you saw your friends date or the kind of partners that your your parent had or your family members had and so you just like relive that out and having that moment of going wait i always thought this was my type but maybe it's not my type or thinking you know what this kind of person like is my type but i don't think my type is actually the best person partner for me right it's like it's that kind of energy and i understand that and I, i've mentioned this i've mentioned this before randomly throughout the video so like i'm i think i'm actually in my shadow work video that i did that like one of the archetypes that like i'm very attracted to are like alpha males my venus is an aries so i like like big dudes like alpha males like mm, like like big strong protector man like i really like like that like that's my that's my jam right but um that doesn't actually work for me like as like a person like having to build with someone right because i have like a fierce like independent like nobody's gonna tell me what to do kind of energy so i actually work much better in relationships with intellectuals people that are a little bit softer they're a little bit more esoteric they're right so it's like i'm like very attracted to like fire and earth but i do best with water and air even though even though it's not necessarily my type and so you might be thinking about that going over like well is my type based purely off of like my physical response to a certain archetype or you know what i mean or does it actually work for me it's okay no, okay we'll, we'll talk about this this is interesting too because if you look at your natal chart ever when it comes to love sex and relationship people like to look at venus right venus is oftentimes um who you attract what you're attracted to again mine's an aries and it's not in in most birth charts they don't show you your juno placement oh that's interesting okay we'll get back to that remind me um yes you remind me um they don't have your juno placement typically in your in your birth chart but you can look up your juno placement because while aries with love sex and relationships has to do with who you're attracted to who may be attracted to you the way you operate in relationships your juno placement actually is a much better placement to look at to see who you work best with in long-term relationships so while i'm attracted very much to that aries emperor energy i even harness a lot of that when when i was in relationships because it's just been me and jesus for a long time right i've, I've been i've very much of a i wear the pants um kind of lady my juno placement's actually in virgo i'm pretty sure it's in virgo um or it might be in capricorn it's an earth sign i think it's in virgo so again i actually do deal better with people that are um a little bit earthy but Virgo's like very detail oriented right so they they understand like the little things aries energy doesn't understand like the little things where it's like the little things that really count for me does that make sense so it might be if this if this is what you're feeling if you're resonating with this at all check out your juno placement because while you're trying to dissect some of this stuff because it's like a lot of stuff here um and just one little confusing ball i can see why your head split open look at your juno placement because it may be quite illuminating for you um and they're just and i, I said remind me because they brought me back to the movie Juno, which came out when I was in high school, and there's a song in that. All I want is you, will you be my bride? Take me by the hand and stay by my son. Ba -da -ba 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 -ba. I might link that as the actual song in the in the cards when we when we wrap up over here. Maybe I'll put that and the Rupain song on. You'll just get you'll get two Shuffle Mancy songs today. But check out, there's something about that. Juno. Is there something about like the Juno? archetype or like
No, Juno. I'm like really curious now. There's something. Juno is a goddess. I thought so. Juno, in Roman religion, chief goddesses and female counterpart to Jupiter, and Jupiter's the gifter, Jupiter's the expander, right? Jupiter's uh, just went retrograde, little bitch. Um, closely resembling the Greek Hera, with whom she was identified. With Jupiter and Minera, she was a member... Okay, that doesn't help me. She consists of interdependent of three traits, sovereignty, war, and fertility. It's the queen of the gods and shared an interesting relationship with Jupiter as both his sister and his wife. Oh, well, that's getting a little Oedipus for me, but there's something there's something about that. There, oh, there's a Juno. Mythopedia, the Roman goddess of marriage, home, and family. Yeah. See, I know what I'm talking about even when I don't actually know what I'm talking about. Sometimes we got to do, for those of you that are new here, hello, sometimes we have to do a little family Googling. Um, <laughs> and I was, I was saying that in this card, so that's interesting. Hmm. Hmm. Very interesting, Gemini. So let's see if anything else wants to come out, and then we'll move over to your um, extended reading. Ten of Wands. Yeah, you burden with justice. Oh, oh, my Geminis. I love, I love my Geminis so much. My little Geminis. Yeah, burden with balance. And, and what's fair? There's an idea of, like, what's fair, too. You could have been with the Ten of Cups overturned. You could have been in a really long-term relationship. And... You know, you could have really gotten the short end of the stick, which could have been part of this. It's it's done, but it doesn't feel like it got wrapped up because there's still so much unfinished business. There was no closure, like, and it perhaps feels unfinished because, like, the replacement hasn't come, right? It's, like, so often you hear, again, it's, like, these movie moments, right, where it's, like, someone gets cheated on or someone gets screwed over. Someone gets the short end of the stick, like, this underdog story, right? And then you know, right when they think all hope is lost, it's like the perfect person comes in and like sweeps them off their feet. And it's this, and you're just like sticking your neck out, looking around for like someone to like sweep you off your feet. You're even like lifting like one foot off the ground a little bit just to like help them out, like just a tad, like, hey, I already started it. Like there is something about it that doesn't feel fair and it doesn't feel balanced yet. And like their replacement after the excavation hasn't come yet. And so we're, we're gonna have to dive more into this um, in your extended, but... I understand why you're feeling kind of shitty. I get it. No judgment for me, Jemmy. If if this resonates with you. This Ten of Wands, too. She, she's right next to this little skeleton guy, like, holding up a mirror. So, I, which I also think really represents your dualities, right? It's, like, the two energies that you are in right now. Like, trying to be, like, really hopeful and persevering and, like, let love live. But then there's, like, this part of you that it's, like, almost what died or like what didn't work or what's not gonna work moving forward like being ref like having to sit in both of these energies at once and that's really hard energy to process as well right with all of these roots it's like all of the roots that you planted that went dry and they're not growing anymore and just do you know what I mean that's part of this nostalgic kind of energy to needing to move past that which will take you time if you're struggling with it to, to move past that nostalgia and look forward to a new day because sometimes we're looking for the replacement um to replace the void inside of us when um wounds always need to be healed from the inside out which is annoying but it is how it goes so gemini i'm gonna leave it here for you i'm gonna take it over and do your extended reading if you're interested in part two of your reading you have a choice between vimeo and patreon those links are in the description box um your monthly reading <clears throat> is already up on the channel for june um and my information for personal readings is in there as well so i love you gemini you stay prayed up you stay blessed you stay sweet you keep your chin up grab a couple colored pencils and i will see you next time goodbye